Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of BNL Courtside. You're with me, KP Ndlova, and you know as always I'm fiending to bring you the best basketball action from the land. It all went down on the hardwood this week. What did that entail? It entailed BNL action, it entailed NBA action, and just a general euphoria of the game on the land. There was just a lot of excitement. We will get to all of that a bit later. Let's start it off though with the BNL. We had games that had huge playoff implications for the top four spots and Wembley Indoor Arena was live and action packed. Let's have a look at how it turned out. The first game was between the Soweto Panthers and the Northwest Eagles. Let's check it out. Money Mike once again splits the defense and this time with a one hand. Oh, Money Mike. Right now, all, all the Panthers need to do is get the ball in the hands of Money Mike. Once again, Panthers 10 point lead and that's a three. Plus, with the offensive rebound, he will try a layup but can't get it to go. Prince Lewis down the floor, Giti will drive in all the way to the basket and a layup. Giti getting his name on the score sheet. Prince Lewis to the basket, cutting behind the defense. Elan Holel has checked into the game for Panthers. Kamini drives inside to make some things happen for the Eagles and gets the layup. Tough, tough shot. The Eagles are 34% inside and the Panthers 47%. And this doesn't mean that the Eagles haven't taken a lot of shots they have, but they've just been, uh, had it difficult to convert. Bonunu spins and a short jumper just inside the key. inside left-handed finger roll Prince once again punishing on the offensive rebound count the basket Selepe now working his way up the floor They're just under two minutes to play this game is well and truly out of reach for the Eagles Basket counts Giti wants the ball on the wing and uh, might better let it go. Mike the bounce pass to Prince Lewis, two big steps. Holzi can't get it to go. Mukumbuta with the left hand, backs in the layup. Jingana, get ball stolen away by Mukumbuta. The Eagles foul Mukumbuta and send him to the free throw line. Frustrating afternoon for Ngakane. Frustrating afternoon for Coach Patapaimalu. But the Sorrento Panthers done all they needed to do. It's been an emphatic performance, an emphatic win. 20 points, the difference. Great all-round performance by all the players on the floor. Captain Lebisa Selepe will be very, very happy with the output from his team. And at full time, it's Northwest Eagles, 65. Sorrento Panthers, 84. Valiant attempt there by the Eagles, but unfortunately the Panthers were out there to clip off the Eagles' wings. It's going to be a very tough battle for them now to get into that top four spot, but the Soweto Panthers looking very pretty right now at the right time of the season. Next up, we had the battle, the clash of the Titans, the two undefeated teams, Swanee Suns, a goalie magic. Someone was going to have to leave here with an L. Let's check out the action to determine who. For three! Got it! Did I nine? Steps up. Timbu. He's got to work in the low block, but Moyo and the layup. Pass. Great ball movement. Another turnover by the Suns and Festile all the way down the floor. Bale from the top, drills a deep, deep jumper. He's got the range. Jackson looking to work on Fodi, finds Mabiza, 
kicks it in the corner. Cut the three. Big, big three. Mabiza hanging in the air. I think Mabiza recognizing the fact that Mkonto is on the bench and trying to make amends while he still can. Another screen. Rolling to the basket. Tries the left hand. Tacks it with the putback with one hand. Oh my! Aaron Jackson Jr. with another putback slam, and this time on the young Miguel Farrell. Right now for the Suns. With four and a half minutes to play. Mazi in the corner for three! That's a big time three from Mazi. It's a five point game. Jackson inside, throws up the jump hook. It's been battled down low for Mulebati and anyone he's been guarding. Mahiza kicks it to Mati for three. Got it! As it rattles in. Mahiza down the floor. And that will be the ball game. Coach Flosh Nguyenya suffering his first loss in the BNL. And the Twani Sons continue to march on, continue to scorch and continue to burn their opponents as they pick up their seventh win. The Turner Suns go up to 7-0 and and the Magic fall to 7-1. and The road to the BNL Championship in 2015 goes through Twani. And full-time score, Twani Suns 55, Egoli Magic 50. And the Twani Suns really looking fit to win their third consecutive BNL title. Yes, it's still early days, but after a performance like that, I mean, one must commend them. Playing without their leader, without their captain, El Mutiba, what a great win for the Twani Suns. Now back to the NBA action as well. They were out there at Wembley Indoor Arena to check out the game, and Mensah Balula and some of the BNL executives welcomed the NBA delegation with open arms, and uh, I got a chance to mingle a bit behind the scenes and chat to some of the players and the execs Let's check that. Aye, aye, basketball, aye, aye. To all the players, the coaches, our visitors from NBA, the players and the legends of NBA and FIBA president with us here today and Ali Mukwena, Razmatas Mukwena. I just want to say basketball is back and is here to stay. And tomorrow, we've got the biggest game, first time in Africa, NBA in Africa. And I want to say to the players and everybody, welcome to the motherland, welcome to South Africa. And to NBA, this is what we have started. It's gonna explode, it's gonna be bigger and better. But we started from the bottom, like Drake say, now we are here. So this sport is going to be big and better here in South Africa. Thank you, everybody. Aye, aye, basketball, aye, aye. Aye, aye, super sport, aye, aye. Thank you very much. How excited we are to, to be here this afternoon. We're just coming from one of our community uh, activities in Edenville at the SOS Village. That's why these gentlemen are dressed the way they are and how I'm dressed the way I was. Part of making history here tomorrow with the first ever game in Africa by the NBA, we're doing a lot of work in the communities and we want to thank our players again for giving up their time uh, to come and work with us on that. I just want to very quickly introduce uh, the people we have here from the NBA family. I'm gonna start by the president of basketball operation, Mr. Rod Thorn. He's a former NBA player, a coach, a general manager, and he drafted Michael Jordan. And then NBA legend, and currently a senior vice president for basketball operation, Kiki Vanderway. And NBA legend, 
and I'm sure most of you have heard his name, Tyrone Maxi Boggs. And a top 50 greatest of all time from Nigeria, Hakim the Dream Olajuwon. And to our players, he just won the NBA championship this past season from the Golden State Warriors, Festus Azili. He's from Nigeria. And from the Houston Rockets, that's the second time he's here, out of Basketball Without Borders, Terrence Jones. And now he was at Basketball Without Borders Africa in 2008. He's from Senegal in the Minnesota Timberwolf, Gorgi Jeng. I want to also introduce our partners from FIBA Africa, the president of FIBA Africa, Mr. Aman Yan, and the general secretary of FIBA Africa, Dr. Alphonse Bile. Thank you, and hope to see you all tomorrow at Ellis Park. With me right now, the gentleman who presented us with the check, Kiki, you've been around here for a couple of days now. Yes. What's been the atmosphere like, and you know, what? What have you been expecting from SA? How has it been for you? Well, it's been tremendous. The reception that we've gotten has been nothing short of spectacular. It's a beautiful country. We're so happy to be here. And it's amazing the ba how basketball has improved uh, amongst the mesh, especially the young players uh, in South Africa and, uh, and in the continent of Africa. Uh, you know, it's very close to our commissioner, Adam Silver, very important that basketball continues to improve and that we help the youth continue to uh, enjoy the game of basketball and increase the popularity within South Africa. Now, you are president of operations. We're here primarily, though, for BWB. You're talking about development. You tell me now, we've been talking about the importance of BWB as super sport analysts, but now we've got it straight from you. How important is something like a BWB initiative for the growth of the game, especially here in Africa? Well, it is. I mean, I'm the vice president of basketball operations, but I appreciate the promotion. Thank you so much. <laughs> <Just> like a president. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but, you know, really, it is important. Basketball starts at the grassroots level. And that's where it's important to get the skills to the young players uh, so they can know how to enjoy the game and also enjoy the merits of basketball, which are teamwork, hard work, responsibility. Um, and, and also, if you, if you learn about the game, then you learn to enjoy the game uh, going forward. And we want to build, make sure that the uh, South Africa has the right infrastructure and we can help with that to build the game amongst the, 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 the children and the youth of, of uh, South Africa and also bring the game to the greater population so they can enjoy the game as well. Thank you very much. All right, guys, I'm here with the photo bombing Festus Azili. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Terrence Jones of the Houston Rockets, guys. You're here, South Africa. Very, very big event that's happening now, game that's happening tomorrow. How excited are you to be here? Uh, I'm very excited. It's just an honor. And to be here for one of the first games in history uh, of the NBA in Africa is just an amazing feeling. And I'm just humbled and happy to be here. Now, Festus, I'm going to move this over to you. You're watching the game here. What's your take on the, you know, the talent that you're seeing out here? What's your take on the game here in South Africa? Uh, there's some good talent out here, man. I watched my man dunk on people a couple times. You know, so I'm rooting for the team that looks like the Golden State Warriors. They got the Golden State Warriors calls, but no, nah, we got some good talent out here. Now, guys, this is the champion with the Golden State Warriors, Mr. Festus Azili here. Tell us a little bit what that experience was like winning an NBA title. Uh, surreal, surreal, but I think uh, it was it was given to guys that played as, as a team. You know, we, we bought into the concept of team basketball, and uh, we sacrificed every day, and uh, it was very rewarding. You know, it feels it feels good to to be to get to get paid for putting all that time in and all all that effort. And there you have it, guys. What a great day of basketball action at Wembley Indoor Arena. It was wonderful to have some of the players out there, have some of the executives out there to talk about the growth and development of the game. Because remember, it's not just about the game. It's also about where the game is going to go. And I think we got a, a pretty good idea of that from the interviews that we had. It was also great to obviously hang out with some of the NBA champions, Festus Azili, the boy. But uh, yeah, we're going to close out with some of the top plays for the day. We'll be right back after the break.
Welcome back everybody to BNL Courtside. This is your one-stop shop for everything basketball. And if that's the case, then we need to touch on the NBA Africa game that took place on the 1st of August. It was the first time ever that an NBA game was played on the African continent. And what a treat it was. I got a chance to sit down with my teammates Q and Bolisi before the game. And we were just mulling over everything basketball and what this game really means in terms of the development of the game game you guys want to check out this interview man i tried to do my best with the host of the most and did it with the coast of okay i can't do a police impersonation so well so let's cut it and just get to the insert okay it's nba africa game happening here in johannesburg for the first time ever on the african continent guys we got basketball right here in our backyard hey jb i think i'll sum it up i've said it all week it's surreal it, for you, for me, for Nko, it's just been something like a dream. You know what? I wrote down the line. I was like, it was all a dream. I used to read Slam magazine. <laughs> it, it really was. It is because this is where it all started. It started watching the games, watching the inserts. I remember seeing clips of the dream, Hakeem Olajuwon, yeah. and and thinking that this is going to be yeah. this is going to be it. You know, this is yeah. this is the sport that I'm going to play. Yeah. And now we have him on our shores, and we have some of the best talent in the world. There's arguably some of the best athletes in the world yeah. here to exhibit their skills and entertain an African crowd on African soil. Now I remember growing up in police, I remember uh, Magic Johnson came through with uh, the Harlem Globetrotters uh, in the 90s. And uh, my mom took me out there to that game. I was a huge basketball fan by then, but you know we didn't really have as much exposure to the game. They came through, went to the arena, saw Magic Johnson play. I, got to, I remember he walked past and I got to brush him. You know what I mean? And that excited me so much. So I can imagine, talk about the impact that now the NBA is going to have for these kids coming through, development standpoint. I mean, this is just, oh man, man, this is amazing. Man, man, KB, first of all, Q is biting me, okay? I've been working on this intro like it was all a dream. It started way back in 93. NBA action and inside stuff on my TV screen. I had the Lake Show on my wall. Every Thursday, Shaq attack. Now I'm going to see Chris Paul. <laughs> so so he, he he was biting. I'm very surprised, you know. But yeah. hey, it speaks about our brotherhood. Yeah. But man, for me, really, this dream started way back in 93. I, I, I had dreams of playing in the NBA, uh, being naive, thinking that I could play, but this is as close to playing in the NBA that I, I could ever get. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about this opportunity, you know. You talk about Magic Johnson coming through with the Magic Johnson All-Stars. I remember uh, seeing Craig Gilchrist playing on the South African team, select team, that played against the Magic Johnson All-Stars. I remember the Harlem Globetrotters coming through to the University of Dur uh, Durban Westville back in 1997 I was out there I saw them I thought I, I, I wanted to have a front row seat but from wherever I was sitting I was happy just experiencing basketball man you talk about the passion you talk about the love this is what it's about anyone out there who really loves the game of basketball and really does not play it for just for show but is really really in love with the game this is their moment right now. definitely is their moment of policy and I think Q, let me bring it over to you man I mean one of the things that is particularly gratifying for us we've been sitting here behind the booth for three years now with the BNL. I mean, we would have never thought that, you know, we'd be now involved in an NBA production and that's what's happening right now. We are going to be calling the game. We're going to be anchoring the game along with, you know, Carol Shavalala, who is, you know, TV royalty uh, in her own right. But, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's like a dream come true. But over and above that, a lot of experience as well that we're getting from, you know, the international guys coming through. I'm talking about Chris, uh, Quinn Buckner as well. We got a chance to speak to them. They're the Indiana Pacers in-game announcers, Indiana Pacers. And they've been doing that for com uh, a combined over 20 years of experience. So we are now able to get that type of knowledge from these guys. I mean, Q. Well, that's what I'm doing. You see me? Yeah, I'm pinching myself because, you know, who would have thought that last night you would have been standing there interviewing Kevin Farid and Boris Diaw and you're literally getting to interact with these guys. And you, you know, I had, a, I had a chat with Boris Diaw about what he's doing with the France national team. I had a chat with Kevin Farid about, you know, just, just his upbringing, the, the struggles he had at college. And this is what this platform gives us. Now, for us as broadcasters, that's great. For us as ex-players, it's even better because yeah. these are pinnacles that we're never going to get to. Yeah anymore but now we get to carry the game we get to grow the game and i don't think there's anything better for one x players or two people who are currently 
charge with the, with the responsibility of growing the game in, in the country. We have the blessing and the pleasure to carry these games every week. What's your view on, on, on Amadou and, and, and Masai? KP, they doing a whole lot of work. I had the privilege yesterday to go to uh, the Hyatt Regency Hotel yeah. and to interview uh, Commissioner uh, Adam Silver of, 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 uh, of, of the NBA. And we spoke, I picked his brain about a whole lot of things. But it's great just to know that he knows exactly what's happening with his organization all over the world. And he knows what it takes to actually to grow the brand of the NBA, to grow the game of basketball throughout the world. And it's just great to see that he's got capable people working here on the average continent based on the African continent and doing work throughout the continent we're seeing the fruits we're seeing the results he said that Amadou uh, uh, the vice president of, of NBA Africa Amadou uh, Ganufo was the one who said to him that uh, why not Africa if you want to expand the game bring a game to Africa and let's do it and then I said that if we're having an NBA uh, Africa game now it means this it's going to be an annual event. It means sometime in the future, we are looking at an NBA preseason game coming up. But another thing that I touched on and I was very happy that he actually knew about it was the whole NBA Africa initiative in the Northwest with the Royal Bafu game. That's a great initiative out there. It's developing young people who need the game of basketball, who can, who are developed in the game and who can take it forward. I so wish, and I like the fact that it appears that it's in a rural area. We have so many other rural areas throughout this country that can benefit from that. But but uh, kudos and big ups to NBA Africa uh, and, and Amadou Gallo Fall. Always fun hanging out with Q and Mkolisi talking about the game and to have been part of such a huge game is a big point in anyone's career. Kudos to us, we did it. Another place where it was done though was at the Ford Fan Park that was held at Monte Casino. We had a whole bunch of action out there, including the human trickster, Joe Odiambo from Kenya. He had a very, very exciting little display of basketball action out there. Holds a few old records, actually, but let's hear from him. Let's check out the action. Let's check out the Ford Fan Park. I played basketball in, uh, in Arizona, and uh, from there, I wanted to become one of the world's greatest basketball handler. So I just went out, I started practicing. I practiced five to six hours a day, and I wanted to hold a world record in something. And dribbling was one, one area where I was good at, and I was able to practice, and I was, was able to break the world record by dribbling five basketball, and now I hold the world record for dribbling six basketball at one time. I also hold the world record for spinning one basketball for four hours and 15 minutes. I also hold the world record for juggling three basketball and shooting 39 layups in one, in one minute. I am one of the world's greatest basketball dribblers, and I have traveled all over the world being a good ambassador to just working hard and making your dream come true to whatever you choose to do. And it's a lot of fun that we are able to expose the kids to this kind of experience. And hopefully they will get something out of our, us being here and move on to become better at whatever they do from here onward and always. Basketball, South African basketball is really coming up and uh, two years ago I was over at the Royal Basketball Ken and we started a program there and kids are getting better and now when I'm, I'm, I'm at home I'm watching on TV and I'm watching South African basketball and it's growing. It's growing every day and with Basketball Without Borders the NBA is able to isolate some of the best players and give them training and I'm thinking in the next five to six years we're going to be having a lot of players populate all the professional sports all over the world and we are getting there and Africa it's growing every day and I'm looking forward to seeing some very very good players coming out of not only Africa or South Africa but every other country in Africa because they are all inclusive of what is going on here there's a big big move to succeed in basketball and we are getting there Throwing, uh, I've been shooting balls and I shot twice and then I got knocked out but I got a prize and I'm very happy about that it's very exciting Thank you very much, everybody. That's it from BNL Courtside. That's it from the BNL Games this weekend. And that is it from NBA Africa Game. 1st of August came. It went. We're still going to grow the game. We're going to develop the game. We're going from strength to strength. But right now, I'm going out. <laughs>